Yanati's Breath Temple, home to sweet winds and pleasant chimes. Zaji, I don't like your tone. Is there something you're not telling us? I... Well, uh, this one may not have left home on the best of terms. Oh, I'm sorry, Zaji. I didn't mean to pry. Do you want to wait outside? Lovely, Aelia. Your words are as a soothing balm. With you by Zaji's side, he can do anything. Let's venture forth. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Mother, it's been so long. Out, out of this temple. You disrespect Yanarthi with your very presence. Please, this is important. We're trying to save all of elsewhere. Then this one will speak with your companions. As for you, out. Zaji will... Zaji uh, claims you seek to save elsewhere, yes? Tedali doesn't believe anything that comes out of that insolent cop's mouth. But you should not be judged for his failings. Why have you come here? A noble quest. Unfortunately, this temple will be of little help. We lost one of our sacred temple bells many years ago. We have not been able to call upon Kanarthi's guidance ever since. Tadali's Jekosit of a son stole it. That is why Zaji is no longer welcome in this temple. Still, Kanarthi shows grace in all things. Even betrayal. If you find the bell and return it, this one will search for your dragon. Once you return the bell, Tedali will call the winds of Ganarthi to lead you to what you seek. Should all go well, they will take you to this dragon. This is a place of worship, dedicated to Kanathi, goddess of the winds. She fills Gariti sails and guides our ships to safe harbor. She carries the souls of the departed to the sands behind the stars and leads our heroes to glory. We pray to Kanathi to share her knowledge, for all of Tamriel feels the caress of her winds. We train to hear her words in the ringing of our sacred bells. Through them, we can find that which is lost. So you must get Zaji to return the bell. Why Zaji would perform such sacrilege is beyond this one's wisdom. It wasn't that Adali was surprised he left. Anyone could see his paws itched for travel, but to steal from our holy temple. Adali did not become clan mother of Black Heights for holding a grudge. Anyone who seeks to help elsewhere against these terrible dragons deserves our aid, even if it means dealing with the Dali's traitorous son. You would think a life devoted to the Divines would make Mother a bit more forgiving. 
Well, uh, what did she say? Zaji had trouble hearing your conversation from the other side of the gate. Stole? That is not the exact word Zaji would use. Regardless, returning it would be tricky. To purchase the perfect pounce, Zaji sold the bill to the skooma lord, Bahazar the Bull. Said trade involved certain promises. Zaji happened to mention that the bill could be used to find things, which is entirely true. Of course, this one had no idea how to use the bell in that way. Bazahar was not pleased when he learned this. Murderously so. Zaji has made a point to keep track of Bazahar's movements to avoid a confrontation. For example, he currently hides out in Moonlit Cove. If we want the bell, we'll have to sneak in and steal it back. Moonlit Cove is just south of here, right on the coast. A beautiful place to visit, if you ignore the skooma dealers and the pirates skulking about. In Zaji's defense, he stole a lot of things that night. Besides, how was he supposed to know the bell was so important? The temple has so many, he just thought Mother would replace it. So Mother claims, but how special can one tiny bell be? Zaji thinks she just wants to punish him, make him run all over southern elsewhere to prove how sorry he is. And he will, or the Dragon Guard, but that doesn't mean he will like it. Moonlit Cove is just south of here, right on the... The cove's waters are filled with moonlight. Many go to drink from its waters, for its holy properties, you understand. At least they used to. Now a skooma lord has taken over, laying claim to the sacred water and attacking anyone who enters. Ugh. Bazahar has some harebrained scheme. Probably thinks the moonlit water can be used to make more potent moon sugar, which in turn could make more potent skooma. But what does Zaji know about Skuma? <laughs> Less than you might think, yes. No idea. Zaji knows he's there, somewhere. But Zaji has never gone in for a closer look. We'll just have to do what Zaji does best. Improvise! Wash away the stench of such sour sugar. Stay back, stranger. The shrines are shattered and the sea waters stagnant and squalid. Or are you part of the syndicate? 
here to savage the Moonlit Cove. Yes, sacrilegious smugglers and sugartooths. They came in their skiffs and turned our sacred shrines into skumastes. Now the waters stink of their scummy stock. Shave skins, the lot of them. Should our shrines stay soiled, the sojourners who seek sanctification here will steep in soured skum. Shazar shudders to surmise what sickness spawns from these suspect waters. It must be expelled. Srendar sends me a saint. To sanctify the shoal, you must seek the sacred shrines inside the moonlit cove and sip from their source. Swallowing the sacramental waters will suffuse you with their sanctity and this woman. Then we send it out to sea. Steady sleep one. The sparkling waters streaming from the shrines are sacred. Their spiritual strength will safeguard you and allow you to sanctify the shoal once more. Shazar is seldom mistaken. To strip the sacred sugar suspended in the shoal's shallows, all the light John and George shines upon the sea, surges into this cove and mixes with the spring waters spilling from our shrines and settles on the shore, ensnaring the moonlight within. Assuredly, it sparkles like strands of sapphires sailing on the tide. Before the cove was spoiled by these scoundrels, Soaking in the sweet waters brought Kajit perfect serenity. Now, the spoiled waters stir only sickness and insanity. Shazar has heard screaming and shouting from within the cove. The senseless shrieking of sugar tooths whipped into hysteria. The skooma these sinners swill stinks of unsavory scum. Surely, though Shazar slogged many days across the scorch to soak here, so the stench may stem from him. Zaji used to explore this place as a cub. Here, sniff out where Bazahar is hiding. I'm Guma. I'd have become a barman.
I want to catch some jellies for dinner. I rarely have them outside Black Marsh. And sugar food from my skin is a rising man. All this salt on the gives me a cheesecake. How about beating up a few of the crazy? This must be where Mazahar's hiding. Come, Walker. Let's talk. Azahar's stench is unmistakable. He's locked himself in this chamber. Probably has his loot nearby too. Hopefully, that includes the bell. We just have to figure out how to get inside. When Zaji lived here, he used this cove to get away from Mother's constant nagging. It was also a good spot to bring the lovely sweetmeats, yes? Back in the day, Zaji even snagged a key to the back chamber from a sleeping moon priest. It wasn't his hideout then, but yes. Well, 
No. Zaji knows where he left it, though. Come, Walker. Zaji has a lockbox hidden nearby. That ladder... It should be here somewhere. The ladder. Hmm. Walker, let's talk. See that alcove up ahead? It was Zaji's secret spot when the cove contained less Bazahar. That's where you'll find the key. Huh. The ladder this one used is missing. Oh, if only we had. Wait! Zaji has something that will help! This grappling bow. Zaji found it in the sanctum before we left for Black Heights. He thought it might come in handy. Looks simple enough to use. Just aim and pull the trigger. Like a crossbow, yes? Then the rope propels you upward. That alcove up ahead. Ugh, all this salt in the air gives me itchy skin. See that alcove up ahead? It was Zaji's secret spot when the cove contained this grappling bow. Zaji, you are an expert. Oh, all right then. There's a grapple point on the edge of some nearby scaffolding. Aim for that and let the bow do the rest of the work. Remember, look for a lockbox. That's where young Zaji stored his most precious items. Well, before he acquired the perfect palm. Zaji will keep watch from down here. Uh, we only have one grappling bow, yes? Breath has been known to clear barnacles off a ship's hull. That's him! Bazahar the bull! Go get him, Walker! Uh. Zaji! Come! 
Come here, you bastards! We've got intruders! Look at that! Old Rotmelt actually kept the bell. You've got... Get in here and kill these shave skins! Stranger, your sudden to your skivvies. Have you supped on the shrine's waters? You are looking somewhat sallow. Best not to let the sickening skooma seep in too deeply. Step into the shadows, my squeamish savior, and spit all that poison out to sea. Shazar has never seen such a tsunami of spew. Surely it was a sobering experience. But you've spared Moonlit Cove a similar fate. Srendar salty tears, yes. This sanctuary is safe again. Someone will still need to strong on these smugglers into shoving off. But Moonlit Cove will survive. Take this as Shazar's show of support. May Joan and Joan shower you with succor. Shazar soon hopes to shed his soiled clothes and scrub until he sparkles. Then, back to Senshar for another show. Only there, Shazar hopes to be showered in treasures. Just so. A singer, a tail spinner, and a spinner of tails. Shasar regrets that you see him in this sorry state, but his thespian spirit shone through his sloppy appearance. Or his manner of speaking suggested so. Not for some time. 
The ceremony you perform stirs the sacred source of the shrines and instills the shoal with the same spiritual spotless supply. Their spouts will spray streams of sacramental water to sluice the despoiling skooma out to sea. Shazar did not cross the sweltering scorch only to spin round and slink back to censure like a smitten sench. Since you've shored up the situation inside, Shazar suspects the unscrupulous schemers will scatter like skeevers soon enough. Basi has only been robbed four times today. That is much better than the 14 times yesterday. Now please help the Basi out and buy something, yeah? Does he go in? Of course he should go in. Thought he found the bell, didn't he? We found the bell, mother. At great risk to life and limb, we heroically fought our way... Stop bragging and have your friend place the bell on its hook. Jadali wants to look at it. won't do. The bell is tarnished. It can't perform the ritual like this. The dolly was worried about this. Our sacred bells must be cleansed every moon cycle. But the one you returned has been away for many years. We need to perform a purification ritual. If you are willing to lend your aid, this one can walk you through the cleansing ritual process. 
But you must be quiet and listen to her instructions very carefully. First, we must listen for Kanathi's breath. Not just the wind, mind you, but her holy exhalations. And how long will that take? As long as it needs to. Sacred rituals should not be rushed. We're trying to save elsewhere, Mother. There must be a faster way. Fine. If you think you can cleanse the bell faster, go ahead. But don't expect this one to help you. Zaji... Uh, Zaji will own up to that one. He messed up. Mother never did like it when I interrupted her. This one doubts she will be eager to help us now. We'll do what Zaji does best. We'll improvise. The bells are all about ringing, yes? Perhaps if we get them started, they'll figure themselves out. Or something like that. Look, this one spent a great deal of his childhood annoying mother. It takes a long time for her to calm down once she gets in one of her moods. So, in the meantime, why not try Zaji's way? Alright, Zaji has seen Mother ring the bells a thousand times. Just press here. Huh, Zaji didn't expect that. Wait, wait! The big bells in this courtyard had the same colored lanterns. Did you see that? Whenever the bells chimed a certain way, a lantern would glow. Now that this one thinks about it, aren't those lanterns on the larger bells as well? Perhaps there's a connection. Of course! Watch the master at work! Just press here. Did you see that? Whenever the bells chimed a certain way, a lantern would glow. Now that this one thinks about it, aren't those lanterns on the larger bells as well? Perhaps there's a connection. Did you see that? Whenever... Of course. Watch the master at work. One more time. You did a beautiful job. Come, Walker. Speak to Tadali. Walker? Oh. Zaji's rudeness aside, you cleanse the bell. Tadali will now perform the ritual and find the dragon Yagrandu as promised. And then you and your companions will leave this temple. Yes. Now, Kenarthi only shares what her winds can find. Sights, smells, perhaps even a vague direction if we're lucky. It is up to you to discern a more exact location. Through the sweet 
twins of Penelope and the ringing of the bells. Tell us where your grandeur dwells. The winds journey south, sweeping cliffs of lime, and sink deep in a cave that smells of brine. They brush past the dragon's might to dissolve within a terrible light. Time grows short, Hunter. What have you learned? Latvulan's followers swarm the skies. The longer I remain, the greater chance I will be discovered. Tell me, have you found your Grandu? large limestone quarry lies to the south. Latvulan and his followers have seized it, though I do not know why. Strange that your Grandu should be there now. Unlikely. Your Grandu is still bound to me by his oath. He would not join with my greatest enemy. Head to the limestone quarry and search for this mine. I will meet you there. If you encounter Latvulan, do not attempt to fight him. Our alliance ends the moment you die. Zaji, let Sai Sahan know where we're going. We might need his help. Of course! This one will heroically play messenger. Zaji does not often say this, but be careful. Yes, the situation does not sound so good. We should go to this mine and find Yagrandu. It should be just south of here along the coast. I'll meet you there. Athalar was right. This quarry is teeming with cultists. I haven't seen Nafalar, but I don't think he can approach this quarry. The cultists would spot him before he got close. We might be on our own for this one. No sign of the dragons, but there are plenty of cultists. They're mining and keeping watch. This doesn't make any sense. What would a dragon cult want with limestone?
The mine's entrance should be west of here. You take the lead. Master's power is limitless, and he will share it with his devoted. I will die before I bow to you, or your master, not Lathalon, if you insist. Lathalon? And the other dragon, is that Ygrandu? We aren't too late.
them, Rakaji. With pleasure, my master. Rise, Yagron. Demonstrate your loyalty. He's turning Yagrondu into some sort of monster. We have to stop him. That is what happens to those who defy Latvulan. He kills them, then forces their corpse to do his bidding. Park Lok, what shameful arrogance. Waiting for Latvulan to leave. Had I faced him now, he would have overpowered me. Do not think me proud of such actions, Hunter. Lord Vulan has somehow increased his power. We are not prepared to fight him just yet. To raise one of my kind takes great skill and greater preparation. Rakujin used the green stone to amplify his necromantic abilities. That stone... Hmm. It must be why Latvulan's cult has claimed this mine. When Latvulan hears of your victory, he will return to secure this mine. We must return to the Sanctum before that happens. After that, we can decide our next course of action. Lord Vulan underestimated you, Hunter. He shall not do so again.
there's nothing you could have done. I know, I know. I just wish we'd gotten there sooner. You did well today. Your Grandu may not have joined us, but neither will his corpse become a tool of Latvalon. A small victory, but a victory nonetheless. Did you discover anything else? army of dragons with the means to amplify their power? That doesn't bode well. I do not like that we're going into this fight blind. There's too much we don't know about Latvalon and this cult of his. We need more information. I do. But first, I have something for you. I found it in the Sanctum's treasury. But let's keep this between us. If a certain smuggling crew knew we had a treasury, they'd empty it faster than Zaji can drain a bottle of plum brandy. If we can't outmatch our enemies, we must outwit them. I want you to infiltrate the cult. Learn where their base of operations is located, how large a force they command, and most importantly, what they plan to do next. Alia believes the cult is recruiting in Senchao. I want you to find a recruiter and join their ranks. As a member of the cult, you'll be privy to a great deal of information. But first, you want to speak with General Renless. If there's cult activity in the city, Renless should know something about it. I want you to see if he has any leads you can follow. Alia has agreed to get you into the palace. No need to schedule another appointment. When you've learned all you can about the Dragon Cult, return to the Sanctum and report your findings. Trading our new Dragon Guard. Hounce's crew may be the best smugglers in elsewhere, but that doesn't make them Dragon Hunters. Luckily, I was able to outfit them with weapons and armor from the Sanctum stores. They don't have a choice. Their homeland has been invaded and they want to protect it. I'll do my best to help them, but there's only so much we can accomplish with the limited time we have. There's always hope, my friend. Even in the darkest night, a candle can shine. This is the time to stand against this rage of dragons. Victory isn't certain, but what in life ever is? We have to believe we have a chance, or all is lost. A wise request. Our enemy is Latvalan, a dragon of great power and greater evil. He seeks to destroy Tamrio, but we do not know yet how he plans to do so. We do know that he leads a large cult and has several dragons working with him. They worship Latvalan and seek to help him destroy our ally, Nafalar. One of the cult's prominent members, the necromancer Rakajin, has demonstrated how they use a strange green stone to amplify magic. You saw its power, not I. Did it not allow the necromancer to raise your Grandu from the dead to attack you? Regardless, you must infiltrate the cult and learn more, find out what they're up to, why they follow Latvalan.